This Norwegian low-budget teen drama provided what has been missing in its contemporary American high-budget competition. Scum leaked through illegal underground Google Drive channels to comply with the high demand of devoted international viewers after geoblockers were implemented on the Norwegian website due to music copyright issues. Most of the Norwegian population became transformed by the culture of constantly refreshing the main site for the transmedia series, willing to stop whatever activity, whether it be a party or university lecture, to behold the newest post. Varying international Facebook groups were made with thousands of followers, reaching record high numbers like 180 million views, accumulated under the scum hashtag on a Chinese media platform called Weibo. The show ended in 2017 after four seasons, but lives on in the seven different adaptations around the world, as well as in the hearts of millions. How did such a niche show spread like rapid wildfire and what makes it so good? The fact that Scum became so successful truly feels like a win for the good side, as Scum was not made to achieve money, fame, or recognition. On the contrary, and uniquely so, to help its consumers. All executive decisions were based on their mission statement. Scum aims to help 16-year-old girls strengthen their self-esteem through dismantling taboos, making them aware of interpersonal mechanisms, and showing them the benefits of confronting their fears. They arrived at this mission statement through the NABC development model, which doesn't focus on the need of the company, but rather on the need of the consumer. To figure out the definitive current needs of the 16-year-old target audience, the production team delved into an eighth-month-long research process. Julia Andem, the creator, director, and writer of SCUM, traveled the country having 50 in-depth interviews with teenagers, as well as 200 speed interviews. The primary discovery was that modern teenagers are under a lot of pressure, so the mission statement was developed to help aid relieve some of that pressure. She also gathered inspiration for her characters during this research, making sure the substantial diversity of teenagers was reflected. Following production, she got continuous feedback from the actors as well as viewers, maintaining its accuracy, continuously focusing on the need of the viewers. Scum was not accidentally good, but has been purposefully and cleverly developed for seven years, starting with three previous attempts. The previous attempts were focused on a younger audience, with the last attempt being a success. A success big enough to try creating content for the teenage age group the television company had not gone near in 20 years due to fierce American competition. And as previously stated, the attempt was a success. With the massive reach that the show obtained, you are bound to wonder how they marketed the show. Was there a massive social media coverage? Did the actors go door to door winning the hearts of the nations? Did they use a new scientifically proven special trick that would conjure a massive teen following? Actually, the marketing strategy was quite simple. The strategy was having the least amount of marketing possible so that teenagers could find the show on their own instead of being tipped by a parent of that hip new show which seems to give the opposite effect of deeming it hit. This also played into their strategy of blurring the lines between real and fake, a tool they used to reach the teenagers on a deeper level. By using the tool of transmedia, they furthered this effect. Transmedia is telling a single story or story experience across multiple platforms and formats using current digital technologies. Scum used this format by posting screenshots of private chats and Instagram posts from the characters in real time. Real time is another clever tool the series benefited from. The actual time during which a process or event occurs. So an episode of Scum is a combination of clips that were previously released throughout the week. The clips were posted exactly as it was happening, so if there is a scene from a classroom at 10.34am, it was released on the SCUM website at 10.34 a.m. There is so much to examine when it comes to SCUM, like how to work with and honor your fandom, the iconic cinematic and literary influences, pros and cons of working with a small government-owned production company, the display of unexplored topics like gay teenage romance, eating disorders, and young faith, how the transmedia and real-time combination created a new level of connection, that all ages were watching it, Although all these topics and way more are worthy of exploration, I want to focus on the show's character. 
All these unique storytelling tools I mentioned certainly add to the extensive conception and quality of the show, but I think the show stands strong without it as well. The show's strength is in its authenticity. Let's take a look at the different sides of this proclaimed authenticity, starting with the actors. The actors are actually age appropriate, or at least only differentiating with a couple of years max. There were 1,200 auditions held, and the select few to join the cast had their character built around them. Yulian then makes sure to utilize the actors to their fullest, constantly acquiring as much feedback as possible, like even having Marlon Langelam style his own character. Style is something that has been excellently handled in Scum. The teens have distinct wardrobes that modern teens actually would wear. They even repeat outfits and borrow items from each other. The series never make you doubt that these could be real teenagers, and that their environment is authentic, although the story is rather densely curated of dreamy scenarios. It is not surprising that the Tumblr community completely embraced this series. The story plays out in Oslo, thus we get to see beautiful displays of the small, charming city. We also get to see the inside of some lovely Oslo apartments, helping to reveal more of the teenager's general environment. In each season, we follow the perspective of one character. Eva, the girl in love who made a mistake and is constantly struggling to find her identity. Nora, a girl fighting her love for a bad boy, possibly at the cost of her friends and her values. Isak, a boy coming to terms with his love for another boy that deals with mental health issues. Sana, a Muslim girl maneuvering her way through a secular world, and of course there is a love interest for her as well. Since we get to know them through this internal focalization, the show gets profoundly intimate. This is enhanced by the continuous use of close-ups and quiet ambiance. Although... The soundtrack is pretty great, consisting of artists like Kendrick Lamar, Cat Stevens, Kings of Convenience, and Amy Winehouse, as well as assorted Norwegian artists. But still, Scum has that prominent, quiet ambiance, as written by Kaiti Bird in a fantastic article about Scum, to nervously add a friend and messaging them. A quiet depiction of the modern experience I have never seen done quite so well on screen. It's that word quiet that I keep coming back to when I think about Scum. When we discuss modern life, we tend to frame it as faster and louder. These things are sometimes true, but Scum does an unbelievable job of depicting what the slow, quiet moments of the modern life look like. This quietness pulls us even closer in. There are no clunky moments with technology, slang, or modern teenage experience to hoist us out of their reality, which keeps us deeply embedded in the stories. The characters, executed by talented actors, are lovable, funny, and deeply relatable. There are so many memorable moments, beautiful cinematography, and sensational dialogue. All these things combined make up Scum's character, its spirit. The actors, the music, the environment, the massive yellow titles, not to mention the numerous epic slow motion shots. All these things are some of the components of Scum that provide what has been missing in your favorite American teen dramas. A result of focusing on the need of the consumer while still engaging the audience with good immersive story and a distinct style. This is how Scum provides what has been missing in your favorite American teen dramas.